Welcome and good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us to this STEM Careers Days webinar, Microsoft and Factory in the Classroom. The webinar is organized by European Schoolnet in partnership with the STEAMIT, Scientix, and the STEM Alliance project. My name is Eddie Grandmeyer. I'm a project and pedagogical officer for European Schoolnet, and it is my great pleasure to be your host this evening. But before I introduce our speaker, let me go over a few housekeeping rules. My colleague Rocio is available in the chat to help you with any technical support you may need. So please do not hesitate to contact her if you need any assistance. She will also be sharing a link to the signatures list for this event. Please take a short moment to fill it. It is an important formality for us to be able to organize future events. In addition, only by filling this form, you will be able to receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar. This webinar is being recorded and it will be published on the STEM Alliance and the Scientix website. So you'll be able to go over anything you may have missed during the presentation. And finally, we'll be taking questions for our speaker in writing and try to answer as many of them during the presentation as we can. So please ask any questions you may have for the speaker in the chat and I will relay, him to, uh, relay those to him. Now let me introduce our speaker. Ohe Sotomayor Braga has a degree in electrical and computer engineering and teaches at EPAMI, where he is the course coordinator of several courses in the industrial sector. He regularly, regularly manages student internships, and over the last 20 years, he has been responsible for the insertion of over 300 qualified technicians in the job market. He is a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, an MIE Fellow, and has various technical certifications from Microsoft. And he actively uses Microsoft technologies in the development of industrial projects with the students to bridge the gap between the school and the workplace. Today, he will introduce the factory in the classroom project and the lesson drawn from it with respect to STEM education and nurturing STEM careers. This project aims at encouraging STEM careers in the Portuguese vocational educational system and helps develop technical, organizational and soft skills while offering a pedagogical framework for student development. Oh, hey, thank you very much for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, thank you very much for your, for your kind presentation. Um, my name is Jorge Sotomayoraga. I, I come from from Portugal. Um, I, I would like to Sorry. thank you. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It, it, it's, it's usual. Uh, also said uh, in Spanish. It's it's okay. So uh, my name is uh, Jorge, like I said, and and I'll be trying to explain you a little bit of what I do. This is not a, 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 a this is in no means a way to teach you how you should teach your classes and how should you organize your 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 events in the classroom, but uh, it is especially how I do things, how we do things at EPRAMI. Uh, I come from Portugal and today we'll, get, we'll have a, a little bit of, of an agenda in terms of what we are going to see. We are going to talk a little bit about EPRAMI, about industry, industry sector, that's, that's where I work, where my students work. Uh, we'll talk about the challenge, the diagnosis, the solutions, the concept and implementation resources necessary to uh, implement it to, to follow this methodology. Like I said, this is just an idea. It's not an implementation that has to be very strict in terms of, of uh, your particular implementation. Just uh, follow my uh, classes and, and, and get some ideas. Maybe we can have time in the end. I don't know already. Maybe we can have time to do a demo and maybe show you how to implement this in a pr more practical way in terms of uh, discovery. So let's talk a little bit about EPRAMI. Um, EPRAMI is a school, uh, Escola Profissional do Alto Interior, um, that's located in the northern part of Portugal. It's a vocational school. We are uh, in the northern part of Portugal, near the, 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 the border with Spain, with, uh, to be specific to our friends from Galicia. And uh, um, EPRAMI is a school that has been in existence for uh, over a quarter of a, of a century. A quarter of a century is it's funnier to say than 27 years, but it's a quarter of a century. And uh, uh, our motto is in Portuguese, uma escola útil para a vida. This in English, loosely translated, is uh, a school that's useful for life. And for life meaning for your life, for life as it is, for life uh, to be. Okay, so this is one of the main things that we want to be. We want to be a school that's useful for our students during their life and the implementation of their life. 
uh, Epami is one of the Portuguese Microsoft Showcase schools um, that is also a, a vocational school. The term vocational school in Portugal has a, a, a bad connotation due to some political implementations. That's 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 not a problem. But uh, usually we call it a professional school, a school to teach professions. We are also a Microsoft Imagine Academy, and essentially our teachers. Uh, Almost every single teacher has a, a, a certification in uh, Microsoft, being a, a pedagogical certification, being a, a technical certification. Our staff is about uh, 50 teachers in the in the three schools that you saw, and uh, most of us are MIE experts, about 40, 40 something. Uh, there's one MIE fellow, and uh, as usual, uh, in education, uh, women rule, as you can see. That's that's another problem. By the contrary. Um, we have a wide range of, of offer in uh, vocational education from uh, mechanics to cooking, from uh, childcare to robotics. Um, of course, our students spend in uh, our school essentially uh, the 10th grade, the 11th and the 12th grade. So they can have a, a level four professional certification in a given uh, um, technology, in a, in a given field of uh, a specific prof profession. So uh, what do our students do after a 12th grade uh, vocational course? So, so they have essentially uh, two big main roads and I'll discuss them a little bit with you guys so we can see how the career aspect of the implementation is very important. Uh, they can go. They can go into higher education, and, and in there you have the post-secondary. It, it's called a set uh, technological specialization course. Okay, it's 1.5 years. They can go into in the tertiary level, uh, a more specific higher education, and, and they can do a bachelor or can do a a bachelor and a master, uh, or you can do a, a stash. A stash is, is a kind of a, a, a professional uh, uh, course, but from the tertiary level. Okay. Uh, as a kind of vocational course from the tertiary level. Uh, on the other hand, they can, do, they can go into the job market. They can actually get a job and, and implement their profession, their learned profession with us, or even create a job and create their own companies. Let me just show you a, 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 a small image from Cedefop uh, explaining this complexity that is uh, the vocational optionals in terms of career for our students. So. Um, uh, teaching in Portugal, uh, school in Portugal, is mandatory until the uh, 18 years of age, so the 12th grade. Uh, essentially, I work here in, in AQF Quad Level 4, okay, in uh, professional courses with, uh, um, let's say, 24% in terms of um, work based learning, okay. So we have different offerings for our students until the uh, 12th grade parallel tracks that they can follow. Um, after, of course, we have also a, a, a ninth grade, eighth grade level of uh, professional training. Okay, this is a, a very early professional training. It means it's it's discussable if this is a, a good option. Okay, but uh, in the 10th grade to the 12th grade, we have very uh, vocational programs divided for arts, for apprenticeships, for uh, etc. So we have lots of options but when they when they finish the, the 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 12th grade they have to choose what to do with their life if their life is uh, forcefully academic so they have uh, two main options they can do a post-secondary level okay and they go uh, do a cat okay uh, um, specialization course in, in a specific technology for instance i teach robotics okay at this level or can they can do uh, go into a more um, standard kind of view let's say a polytechnic master with a bachelor's or a university bachelor and master's or an integrated program with bachelor plus master's in a five year and eventually a PhD. Okay, so this is uh, in some form, this was in some form until a few years ago, very unfair for my students because my students were, uh, sorry, presenting, they were learning a profession and then they had to do the exact same exams that everybody else had to do to do maths. So now they have a, a, a different form of implementing this. And we have uh, two specific quotas, one for, for students coming from the, 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 the vocational exams, another, another one for 
the general public quota that everybody can can attend. So so it's a little bit fair in terms of implementation for the course. But before going into the high school, in, into the um, higher education, sorry, uh, they need to do they need to do a thing, and that thing is called a prova de aptidão profissional, the, the vocational aptitude or the professional aptitude proof. So this is this is a final project that uh, our students developed mainly in the third year of the course, so the 12th grade, maybe 11 and 12th grade. Uh, it's presented to external jury, and that's that's usually a problem, okay? Because we're talking about um, 17 year olds, 18 year olds. It's it's, it's difficult, um, and then it, it's a proof of aptitude that uh, defines that this student is able to implement something, to implement something in their own profession, okay? So this is usually a group project. This is not my field at all, but this, for instance, can be a, a final project for a, a student that's uh, working in some form of cooking course, okay? Uh, usually my projects are more in this kind of area. They implement a small factory that implements uh, uh, some kind of product and manufactures some kind of product, despite, of course, the product is the factory itself. They can be um, an automotive, automotive uh, uh, proof. They can be something related to solar panels. It depends on the course that they are uh, uh, taking. But one thing all of them have to do is do their final presentation uh, to an external jury. So we invite a set of, in my case, usually engineers from uh, industries around us that come and uh, evaluate the, 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 the developed work. Usually uh, this is a problem because if you're 17, 18 years of age, it's, you have to, to practice a lot to get into a, a full fluent uh, discourse for this um, external jury. So uh, eventually we work with industry. So I'll take a, a little detour and talk a little bit about what we think and uh, what is our uh, perception of the Portuguese and probably European industry status. So one of the main one of the main buzzwords today is industry 4.0. Uh, the problem is that almost no one has, has a clear definition on, on what is industry 4.0. Um, everybody talks a lot about it. It's a lot of the technologies, but is it, for instance, artificial intelligence? Is it related to artificial intelligence? Uh, yeah, we, we, we do use some sort of artificial intelligence in several things inside the industry. For instance, for a predictive manufacturing, for predicting maintenance, for instance. Uh, for instance, for doing this PowerPoint, okay? I used the, the artificial intelligence embed in the PowerPoint to suggest images like this one, for instance. Um, is it related to, to, to collaborative robots? Uh, a friend of mine tells me that a collaborative robot is an industrial robot that is slow. OK, of course, I'm kidding. But the idea is that for me, at least, the collaborative robot will be the, the drill of the future. OK, uh, there is a, a, a huge advance of collaborative robots in terms of implementations in the industry. And this is a trend we have to follow and have to train our, our students to use and to program. OK, um, for me, it is the future. Uh, is it? Uh, a data thing? Is it industry 4.0 data thing? Yes, of course it is. But all of the work of the industry until now was data based. Okay, every single industry needed data to work: production data, uh, marketing data, etc., sales data. So uh, the issue here being data has become cheaper. It's it's a lot cheaper to get data from the the floor of the factory into some sort of application and to analyze that data uh, because hardware is getting so much cheaper. So we need to talk to data and get data. Uh, and 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 is it also is it also about personalization? Yes, it is. Okay, so industry 5.0 is also about personalization. Uh, but of course, personalization of manufacturing is something we've done for the past uh, 4,000 years. It's about uh, craftsmanship. So just to give you an idea, this is a, a, a very typical thing from Portugal. It's called a Barcelos cock, and uh, you can get it personalized as long as it's black and red and blue. But it's craftsmanship, and, and maybe you can get it in several sizes. So probably this is the future, but 
also in a more uh, detailed manner in terms of implementation. Uh, one of the questions is also if it is, is it in this industry 4.0 clouds uh, related, cloud based? Um, clouds is just a, a, when you store your things in someone else's computer. Usually that computer is, is, is uh, very cool with lots of services, usually is run by Microsoft in Azure, and it's not a computer, it's a sea of computers, and probably every single one of that computer computers in that sea is better than one that you have. So uh, yes, the cloud is important to industry 4.0 as well. So usually do we have a, 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 a scenario like this, and we, and we show people that today we are in the industry 4.0, and the most uh, common definition are the civil physical systems, the Internet of Things, the networks, of course, because of the data. Um, and sometimes we hear things like that the professions of the future have not been yet invented. That's one thing I, I clearly disagree, because the professions of the future are already invented. It's, it's scientists, it's an engineer, OK, it's a teacher. Um, and maybe what we don't know is actually some specific subject. So the challenge for those of us who, who teach uh, technicians is to get them the tools, the correct tools, so whatever the future, they are prepared. We do not do futurology, but we try to give them the correct tools. The problem is that uh, industry is uh, ever changing its needs. So industry is moving fast and fast. Uh, our, our students have to be highly adaptable. It's impossible for me, for instance, to give to every single student the same internship in the same company. They go to several companies, so our students need to be adaptable. Uh, our students need to have a, a, a lot of leadership skills. If you want to evolve in your career, if you don't have leadership skills, you, you probably won't. Uh, you need to be resilient, but I don't know, maybe the last two years of pandemics showed us that actually we need to be resilient and everybody has been resilient. Uh, but we need to maintain a high technical skill and high knowledge. Okay, we don't we don't want to sacrifice a high technical skill uh, because we are talking about social skills. Okay, that's that's not the issue. And of course, we need to give our students a clear career focus. What do you want to do with your life? What's your career? Do you want to have a career in STEM? Uh, that for us is very important because uh, the school is evaluated on how much do our students follow. STEM career for this kind of, the, of careers. OK, so it, it, the money that we get depends on that evaluation. So our di diagnosis was uh, we need to improve work based social schools. Yes, we, we need to uh, learn. Uh, our students need to learn to collaborate. Uh, read, we need them to learn informally because that's an issue. We, uh, uh, all along your career, you need to learn uh, by yourself. You need to improve, we need to improve student motivation. We need to be sure that our students are um, completely motivated when they are trying to implement a factory. Uh, and we need to, um, them to improve career goals. In the old days, uh, usually kids didn't want to go into engineering, and, and that is changing, okay? Uh, that stigma for vocational teaching is disappearing, I hope. Uh, nevertheless, maintaining a high technical knowledge. So the, the solution, the solution is, is, is just a twist on, a, on a known solution. We, of course, it's project based learning. This is this. Uh, it, it's very important. This final project that they have to do is a very good opportunity to teach them a lot of things. Uh, but we need more than workplace support. This means that we need an infrastructure that supports uh, this implementation like you do in a normal company, normal being an external company, an industry. Uh, we invented, as, usual, as per usual in pedagogical things, we invented a very pompous name called Matrix Management Learning System Framework Support. Okay, So the basic idea here, the concept is uh, we're going to use matrix management. Matrix management is something that's very old. It's used in the industry. Okay, So we stole it um, from, a, from a partner of us. We're going to create the concept of group and the concept of team. Uh, it's, it is, of course, project-based learning, um, and we depend on a modern distributed workplace that uh, 
helps us implement these kind of things. Sorry. <coughs> So the classic matrix management system is uh, something like this. And, and you have, <coughs> sorry, you have an HR department, a finance department, we call these teams in our implementation. You have, a, you have an IT department, marketing, etc., and you have several projects. And despite, uh, despite sorry, uh, depending on the type of project, you, um, get help from each of the departments or someone in that department will be evolved, involved in this particular project. Um, for instance, the, the finance is in all projects because of course we need money for all projects, so finance is always there. For instance, IT is not here, so probably this project is, I don't know, buying furniture for the new office, so it has nothing to do with IT. But usually you get a lot of people in the same project, okay? So this is a big project, not so big, etc. So this is sometimes how some companies organize themselves internally. It's not a consensual uh, uh, implementation. It has some disadvantages and they are known. Namely, multiple reporting. So in, in the issue here being that this guy has to report, for instance, to uh, several persons in project A in project C, okay? So maybe this reporting causes some problems to the workers implementing the solution. You have some problems implementing managerial goals definition, and of course, the decision-making process can be slow because there are very um, <coughs> departments involved. There is a problem with employee performance assessment. What are seen as disadvantages for, for the industry, for us are seen as advantages. Uh, multiple reporting, okay, we are teachers, we love students to report, report and show us what they are doing. And it helps them build those skills. Um, <clears throat> we need a management role definition. It, that's not a problem because the management are us, we are the teachers, we are the management. Uh, okay, so the decision-making process can be slow, but yeah, but that's what we want to do with students. Well, we want to involve them in the decision process. It's their project, it's not my project, okay? So they need to evolve, be involved in, in that decision process. Uh, employee performance assessment. Usually that, that's not a disadvantage for students, even for teachers, because, okay, we need, we need to know how to implement evaluation of our students. So that's not a problem. Uh, we, we get the advantages of the system. They, they exist in the industry, they also exist with us. Uh, collaboration, yeah, you need to collaborate, that's for sure. Uh, you have a sense of community because you're developing a project or several projects at the same time, and, it, and there is a community of, of people involved. Uh, you have a high level interaction. Everybody talks to everybody, almost. So uh, it, 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 that's, that's usually, usually good. You have co-responsibility because uh, in this project, uh, for instance, project A, everybody is involved in this project, so uh, maybe everybody is co-responsible for this project. There's, there isn't a, a top-down hierarchy that makes the top responsible, okay? So everybody is responsible for this project. Uh, motivation usually improves in these type of systems. And of course, you have to develop a new skill set in terms of collaboration, in terms of working with data, etc. cetera. So uh, how does this help us, our students? Uh, essentially, we are training our students to be flexible and to be adaptable, okay? They have to work with a lot of people. They have to be adaptable to the, to the job description that it is in this project. They have to have initiative and self-direction. It's their project. It's not the, the teacher's projects, it's their project. So they have to do the initiative. Usually that it's their own idea, okay? And they define the planning. And that's usually also a problem. Uh, there's productivity and accountability. Okay, so even between students, there is accountability. And, and, and when everyone depends on everyone, everyone uh, gets a little better. Okay, this is the main idea. It doesn't always work, but usually if everyone depends on everyone, everyone gets a little better. And even those that don't want to study, try to study a little just to be involved in the cool project. Of course, the project has to be cool. That's, a, that's an issue. Um, 
And of course, there's leadership and responsibility. Usually in this kind of groups, you see some students emerge as leaders and some students emerge as leaders and responsible uh, uh, technicians. And this is usually a good thing. So, so let me give you a clear example. This is a small project we did a few years ago, uh, developing a, a medal. This is a, a, a small medal. This is the product that the factory manufactured. And the idea was whenever someone came to school, uh, we uh, used the factory to build such a product and give them to whoever visited us. That's, of course, before COVID. So one of the main things to do first is to get an idea on uh, what are the sections of our factory? What, what are the sub projects of our factory? In this particular instance, we'll have a, a, an A section, a B section with two different types of materials, and eventually a C section uh, that stores the material away. Uh, the robot here is a shared resource between the three groups, okay? So let's take a closer look at what they did next. They did a, a digital implementation of the factory itself. So this is done in Autodesk Inventor. So the idea is this, you have a, a pretty uh, clear idea of where you're going before you start implementing, before you start cutting, before you start spending money. Um, of course, this is a lot of work, but it's done by students, so, so it's okay, so that's not a problem, that's cool. And then eventually you have an implementation, okay? And this is the main, the main uh, issue, and also the main problem is that you actually have to implement the factory. The factory actually has to work in the end. And sometimes this, uh, the, this is the, the recording of a, of a test session for, for the robot with, the, with implementation, because it's going a little bit slow in some, some regions. So the, the, the idea is, at the end, they see the result of the planning, they see the result of the work, and they say the, the, the implementation process from a, a cohort of students have achieved. So, so let's take a, a, um, a deeper dive into the, the, to the framework itself. So in this particular example, we have three sections. We have section A, section B, and section C. We usually call these groups, okay? Uh, on the other side, we have five teams, okay? We call this in Portuguese, equipas. Teams. So we have out, teams is usually associated with a technology, okay? Like HR, human resources, or finance. In this case, we use automation and safety, safety industrial electricity and pneumatics, uh, mechanics and maintenance, 3D modeling and documentation. Someone always have to have documentation, sorry. And we have robotics. So each of the groups, for instance, uh, has someone in 3D modeling, in safety, in robotics. For instance, a review here, name of this student, is from automation and safety, and it works with section A in this group, but you will have to work with everyone else in automation and safety team. But you will also have to work with Hui, and Hui is uh, the robotics uh, um, student for this section A. So in the end, at least each student will have to work with at least uh, seven other students. They will have to uh, make decisions with them, and we have to uh, define things with the other students. And everybody will have to work together. Th that is a risk, clearly, but it's all, it's usually, it goes pretty well. So the idea here is that we need also consultants. We need uh, teachers. And for each group, for each sex sh section, we define a teacher that helps the, that particular section. And we do, do exactly the same thing for technology. So if guys from robotics have an issue and want to solve a problem and they don't, don't get it, they come to talk with this teacher, usually me, and we'll talk a little bit about robotics and try to help them solve that problem. So, uh, of course, this has a, a lot of uh, teacher work as a consultant by the students. So uh, we have a lot of teachers involved. There's a multiple class in, in integration, this meaning that, for instance, teachers from Portuguese and from English always help in this process. Uh, we need a constant access to data because this is a project that's developed by 20, 25 uh, students, and we need to uh, store that data. We need to be very careful with the permissions of that data. Uh, and we need that students learn how to work with that. We eventually uh, started a new course uh, with 100 hours 
uh, called Collaboration in Information Technologies. And we teach our students how to use these collaboration tools. Of course, Microsoft collaboration tools, because that's what we work with. But this was, uh, I don't know, 2018, probably this is where way before COVID. So when, when COVID came and we had to go online, that was not an issue because usually we were online. We were developing things with our with our students. So over the years, we developed seven projects. This is we started in 2011, 2012. I'll, I'll bear you not to translate you this, but we usually try to give them a, a female names to our factories because factory in Portuguese is a, a, a female name. So we have Clara, a female name. This is not this. We always get. Uh, a female name that fits. Okay, so sometimes the acronym is a little bit uh, hard to, to do. We have a factory named Maria. We have a Neve, that's the equivalent for for uh, English. We have a Philippa, an Eliza, a Katia, a Lara. This is also female. This is not a female. This is some projects we are developing uh, based on 2023. So with some some companies. So the idea is that one of the main issues as well is the name of the factory is something that the students decide. And sometimes it's very funny uh, them trying to uh, fit a name into the name of someone. OK, so it's 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 a cool exercise. Maybe we can do that today. Um, so what are the main resources that you use technologies and components? Of course, we have everything from industry, from robotic, pneumatics, automation, lots of 3D printing, uh, uh, PLC automation, um, lots of industrial profile, this type of profile, lots of sensors, lot, lots of specific plastics for protection, for implementation, etc. Of course, we need to use specific software. We need to use things like uh, ADB Robot Studio. We need to use things like uh, Omron CX or Tia Portal for or, or Autodesk Inventor for, for 3D modeling, okay, like this, or Fusion for 3D modeling as well and VR integration, AutoCAD, etc. We use briefly Appland, okay, but we, we stuck with AutoCAD Electrical eventually. Uh, this is because actually we need to uh, implement a digital model, not only physical, but also uh, logical and electrical, and then eventually create that model in 3D and, and, and implement it and, and make it real and make it work. And it's, that needs a lot of data. OK, it's very easy for a project of this dimension to get very, very big, very quick. OK, uh, because we have lots of students working in the same project. And of course, you need something to uh, implement all the data wrangling, if you want, of all of this. In the old days, in the beginning, we used to start using SharePoint far be before uh, things like Microsoft Teams. We even use something called Groove, a very, very old Microsoft software. We use Skype for Business, we use Yammer. Uh, currently, we essentially are um, using Microsoft Teams, integrated with Microsoft SharePoint. We use, of course, every single desktop app from Office 365, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, of course. But we also use Power Platform, the, 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 the low code, the platform implementation for, for, for Microsoft 365. And eventually it becomes also part of the project. For instance, it's, it's usual that our students do a, a, um, an analysis of the budget in Power BI, okay? So to give them a, a, a clear dashboard of the implementation, okay? <coughs> of course, Microsoft Teams is, is the core implementation of our course because it's controls everything in terms of chatting, in terms of meetings. Uh, we try to use Microsoft Stream, that's kind of YouTube inside the company, um, to record classes. Sometimes we use the, the, the inverted classes model, okay, in, in where we talk about, I don't know, this is for instance the modeling of a machine in, in GraphSet, okay, in the SFC, and we teach the students that they learn by themselves and they applied it in the development of the factory. OK, that's that's usually something that we try to do. Of course, we also need that more classical um, evaluation process uh, in terms of an assignment where students get 
an assignment, a task to deliver, I don't know, a, a, a mechanical drawing of some, some, some part they need to implement. So we, we always uh, keep that as well and keep in mind that we can uh, implement this as well and evaluate each of the students uh, uh, personally. Okay, so, so what are our, our results? Um, what went well? Essentially, uh, what went well is uh, we had an improvement of non-formal learning and, and peer learning. We, we, we recognize that sometimes our students don't learn with us, the teachers, they learn between themselves and they solve the problem with, between themselves. That's a big uh, objective for us because that's how they learn in, in, a, in, a, in a career after uh, being with us. Is Everybody works uh, with someone and maybe can learn from their colleagues. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, we had an increase of course completion after we started implementing this. Uh, we managed to start with, I don't know, a class with 20 students and three years later, that same class had uh, 20 students. It, was, it wasn't unusual uh, that we had like 25, 30% uh, drop-offs. That doesn't happen now because of two main reasons, because it's mandatory to go to the 12th grade, but also because they stay with us, they get motivated because sometimes they're building their own factory. They, they treat it like it's our factory, okay? That's one of the issues we have in presentations. Uh, is that they always call it, this is my factory, okay? And they use the, the pronoun and, and, and it becomes a little bit uh, complicated to understand what they are saying. Um, we had a huge, uh, significant improvement in STEM, STEM career follow-up. This means that in terms of evaluation of the school itself, uh, we got a, a little bit better in terms of, of evaluation because we are uh, evaluated by how much do our students go into STEM careers? Is it fair? I don't know, but that's how it works. And we get uh, funding based on how efficient we are in taking our students into a STEM career. So everything uh, we try to do is to make this uh, knowledge and this course valid for their life, uh, a school useful for a life. Um, we get to do uh, more complex implementations because we are using lots of students at the same time. We are using lots of software. We are using lots of things. Uh, we get to manage and do more complex implementations than in the old days. In the old days, we do uh, a, the path of Provo de Profissional was a, a smaller project. Nowadays, it's a very big project, usually with a big budget as well. Okay, at least in terms of a global budget, not as money spent. Um, we got, by this meeting, our students got higher grades from external jury. That's, that's, a, that's an important point for us because our students uh, were recognized by the companies like uh, good technicians or better technicians. And this is uh, very important for us. As a, as a consequence of that, uh, the school by itself got a, a higher evaluation by external stakeholders. This meaning that the industry that we serve, because like I usually say, uh, we are the main supplier of the industry around us because we uh, supply the main resource that they have, that's human, uh, uh, human resource. Um, they evaluate us even better now that we have implemented this kind of projects and we have uh, closed the gap between our projects and projects developed inside inside the industry. Um, and we had a significant improvement in tertiary and post-secondary enrollment. This meaning that uh, in the old days, uh, most of the kids didn't want to go to engineering or didn't want to go to a, to a, a higher degree. Uh, this is not the case now. We have uh, like 50% uh, of students that in the second year say they want to follow up and go into a higher education. Of course, this was also, hence the, the, the notes, this was also by a change in politics, okay? Because if you offer the opportunity for our students to go and follow a STEM career, probably they will take it as well, okay? So this is uh, one of the main prides of us is that we had zero safety issues. In 10 years, that's a lot. We didn't have 
a single significant accident, a single significant um, injury uh, in our school while developing this type of project. And most of all, we had a lot of fun, but let's be honest, try to implement a factory with students. It's, it's uh, a very neat thing to do. It's very fun for us as teachers. But more work, of course, but much fun than to do, do just do a small class and then an exam that, that, that doesn't work. Uh, what went wrong? And we actually got to solve it a little bit. The problem with a specification like this is it an open specification problem. OK, sometimes students want to go off topic and develop, I don't know, a uh, world peace or develop a robot that goes from here to Mars alone. OK, and we have to tone it down a little bit and, and tell to the students, OK, you want to do that? We cannot do that. We don't have NASA's budget to do that. Uh, so maybe we can do a smaller thing. Um, but it's always an open specification problem. So sometimes we we paint ourselves into a corner, you know, because uh, sometimes even us teachers, we can solve that particular problem and we have to turn around it and we don't have the technology or we don't have the body, the money to buy the product. So it, it this open specification problem is a uh, is something that is always in our mind when we're talking to two students. Um, usually you have problems with group management versus team management. Sometimes some students need a little bit of time to understand how things work, how the organization works. That's why we are starting usually the projects in the 11th grade and not only on the 12th grade. This improves a little bit the knowledge of the student about the process, okay? Project planning, OK, every single project planning for a project that involves software, OK, because these projects have software goes wrong. That's that goes without saying we have problems. Everybody has problems. And of course, every single teacher had to have a paradigm shift. OK, we have to work more together. Uh, we solved it. We are closely together working. And of course, it's more time consuming, but it's fun. So it's it, it, it evens, evens up. So uh, what can we do better? Problems that we have, we haven't solved yet. Uh, we need to improve a clear task definition. We need to teach our students to define clearly what is a task because they don't have experience in task definition. So it's, it's always an issue. Uh, we need increased resources, but what school does not need more resources uh, because we knew we need the tech that is going to be in industries in three years from now. So, so money is always an issue in a school. Uh, we need to involve more industry partners from start. Okay, we usually do factories that students come up with, and eventually we are trying to evolve to a more connected to the industry and develop uh, classes. Develop factories. Sorry. So uh, we are going to have industry as a client. That's that's a, a big risk for us. Well, so by June 2023 and by March 2023, we have to develop some small factories for uh, two companies. One called the Vanguard Marine. That's a small machine, and one called Zendal. That's a a, a vaccine factory. Uh, and we are trying to with them to implement a, a small uh, filling line. Um, it's a small machine, but it's 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 uh, very defined in terms of, of project. So this is my presentation by now. I, I, Eddie, I, I'll try to, to to answer some questions if there are some because I'm just on the dock 30, 30 seconds late. That's all right. You you've done really well in terms of timing. Thank you very much for the presentation. It's been very interesting. We did get a we did get a couple of questions. Um, one of them from Gherkin was uh, I'm I'm trying I'm rephrasing a little bit here. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting a STEM related small business can be costly and require the purchase of expensive software. Uh, considering the open source. Uh, opportunities that are available, such as Open Java or uh, FreeCAD or uh, LibreOffice. Would you like to share your thoughts to start a STEM career that might be aimed at a small business eco economically and sustainably? Uh, do you have any preference recommendations and what kind of solutions make things easier to begin such kind of career? Yeah, uh, in terms of implementation, usually um, when my students go into the job market, they, they go as part of a company, OK? Uh, and yes, you have some open source solutions that are very cool in terms of some specific products. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of implementation, 
I usually work uh, with um, solutions like Autodesk, like Microsoft, like Siemens, like Omron. So I'm not a very uh, proficient worker with open source solutions in terms of industry. OK, uh, because uh, and let me tell you that um, most of these solutions are free for students. For instance, uh, all products of Microsoft are free for our students, not free for Epanami, but free for our students. And all of Autodesk products are free for students. Uh, it's like you want to get them when they're young. OK, so maybe, yeah, maybe we can talk about uh, open source solutions, but for now, that is not my experience. My experience is exclusively with closed source solutions and more of the industry standards. Just to give you an idea, uh, uh, for instance, you have some, some tools that are free, actually free, that can do simulation for pneumatics, for instance. Uh, and you have things like, I don't know, in Autodesk, even in Autodesk, like Tinkercad, that it's used to do simulations in Arduinos and stuff like that. Um, the problem is when you try to develop um, more complex projects that have higher specs in terms of security, that higher, have higher specs in terms of drawings, in terms, uh, for me, is a little bit more difficult. I, I told you about Eplan. Eplan is a, a software. It's a, a market leader in terms of electric drawings. OK, but it's it's a paid software and in comparison, for instance, Autodex electrical, AutoCAD electrical, it's a free software for students and teachers and they eventually try to go with these kinds of applications. And I'm not sure if I answered the question correctly, so. I, I believe you do. Uh, well, you get a thank you from Gherkin uh, in the chat. OK, so. um, now another question here. So he, this is obviously the, the field you're you're working in is very technical and, and you know, uh, secondary sort of upward. Do you have any suggestion or um, examples on how to adapt your factory model to primary student and to younger yeah. students? Did you did you see my presentation earlier? You, you did, didn't you? Yeah, because yeah, maybe maybe you can go go on there and, and try to implement a, a demo. Is that okay? Yeah, that let's, sounds let's great. Do it. So, okay, so so this is this is the idea. If you have any questions, please do please do do ask them. So so uh, let's share the fun with you guys. And 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 I'm now I'm 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 going into the chat as well. So I'm here as well. So let me just say hi. OK, it's a little bit harder with two screens, but OK. So let's let's do a factory. OK, and, and, and let, let's see if I can show you my thought process that I have with my students. OK, because uh, the the thinking of the factory and the thinking of the organization usually takes us hours. OK, hours of discussion with the students, uh, hours of discussion on what the product will be, what the factory will be, etc. So let's keep it simple and let's keep it with something that everybody understands. Uh, so let's think about how can we implement a Christmas card factory, OK? Uh, so what's the idea? We want to design, create, develop and implement a factory slash service that sends personalized cards to the elderly all around the nursing home. So let's do something for the community. Let's take our class and do something for the community. Uh, we, I'm not a secondary teacher now. I teach uh, first grade, so we're talking about ages in the age group of six to nine year olds. So, so, so give you an example, a different thing we can we can do. So the first question that we have, and, and and this is something I actively do with my students, is what is the name of the factory? Okay. So I'm 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 all for names for our factory. So please feel free to to chat it because I'm, I'm listening to the chat. So I'll give you some ideas because, of course, I, I thought of this previously. Um, it, when you think of a Christmas card, a Christmas card is an emotional letter. OK, so uh, we are. So we are we are trying to build a emotional letter and, and you know where I'm going, of course, we are trying to build an emotional letter factory. Uh, we are going to build an elf. OK, so this is the main uh, discussion you have to do with your students is try to implement something they think is cool. OK, maybe I think health is cool. Maybe they don't. OK, that's that's a, a generation problem. Uh, but this is the idea. Try to implement something with with them that they like. So we'll build an elf emotional letter factory. So how, how are we going to uh, make the, the the factory. So first of thing, first first of all, we need step one in our factory 
is we need to cut the paper to size. So we, we need a guide how to use uh, safely a cutter. We need a design for the paper, like dimensions and fillets and punch holes. And maybe we can do batches of 50 sheets of paper at a time. And maybe we can use different color paper to make different uh, kind of, of, of uh, Christmas cards. And, and maybe we can do some additional cuts with those crazy scissors that cut like a crocodile or something like that. And probably need a, a guillotine. Uh, probably not this one, probably some scissors will be enough, okay? And maybe we need to cut this paper to size. This, this is a step from our factory. Our second step probably is uh, to fold paper. The idea is uh, maybe we can use Lego to do a, a, a paper folding machine. There are some paper folding machines in, the, in, in, in business and maybe we can uh, see how they are made and try to do something with Legos and try to do something with our kids that makes uh, uh, folding of, of a paper. Uh, if we can do that, maybe it's just a part of the of the manufacturing process. Maybe it's just a part of service. Maybe also we want to decorate. Uh, maybe we want to just create four different types of stamps with potatoes. I did this when I was a kid. Uh, potatoes, you have to peel the potatoes, you have to dry the potatoes, you use salt to remove the water from the potatoes, and you design the potato and, and use inks. Um, so we need to uh, create stamps, but stamps that get, like in a real factory, stamps, uh, tools get used, get, get degraded, gets worse over the times, over the stamping. So we need to maintain also this, this tool, okay? Uh, we need to write a personal random dedication for the gentleman or the lady that's getting the, the Christmas card. Uh, everybody that this is the main issue sometimes we need some steps that everybody has to join up and help okay everybody in the factory we're talking about kids from six to nine years of age uh, contributes with quotes quotes for uh, the the christmas card uh, kids that probably need to improve their calligraphy uh, are writing this uh, this personal dedication in the christmas card uh, and by this time we need t-shirts we always do T-shirts with the name of the project in the back and the name of the of the team in the front. So probably by this time we need T-shirts. We need to place the address on an envelope. Uh, we need to kids that pra kids that need practice reading, that need to writing ability. Uh, maybe we need a, a task list to say if we uh, wrote, written the address and copy the address. I don't know from an Excel sheet to paper uh, by hand. Okay, so they can improve that fine matricity, something like that. So maybe this may make sense. We, we need quality check before inserting the letter, the Christmas card inside the envelope. Humans make mistakes and kids are humans, so we will have mistakes. We need quality control. Is the address correct for that person? Uh, some kid that needs uh, to improve reading and writing ability. To need some kid that needs to improve relational skills and talk to others and ask them if is this address correct? It isn't. So some 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 kids need to interact with each other. Okay. Uh, eventually, we need to insert it in an envelope. We need to uh, create a, a machine that opens envelope and easily inserts the letter inside the envelope. Maybe a balloon control air blower. These these are real things. Okay. I didn't invent invented nothing like this. These are real things. Um, maybe we need a sort of reverse pliers, for instance, for uh, open the envelope. The actual that also exists. Um, maybe also uh, we need to close the envelope. We need to lick the envelope and close it. Uh, we can, of course, outsource the work. Uh, uh, if big companies do it, so can we. And and of course, this is also uh, this is always a good time to have a dog in the in the classroom. That's always cool. Um, but be sure that the, the glue for the envelope is uh, dog safe. So you don't have any issues. Um, you need to go into the mail office and deliver the letters for the for the for the objective. So uh, you need to go into mail station. You need to send the Christmas cards. You need to check the, the tasks as done. Probably you need to pay and use math to do some sort of uh, calculations. You need to have a record of payments. So there's a lot of words also for this shipping. So in terms of matrix management, you have uh, groups and you have sections. You have a, a, a paper manufacturing, okay, that handles envelopes and handles um, um, cutting the paper, etc. You have a decorating and personalization uh, section, 
okay, the, after the paper is cut in, and, and folded, decorated, and, and, and do some personalization, some dedication, and you have also uh, chipping. So we have three projects, and probably have four teams. We have a, a paper technology team, we have a design team that designs uh, things for the different steps of the way. We have quality and safety because we need to teach them, the kids how to use a guillotine or how to use a, a scissors. And we need to sh be sure that everything works as expected. And of course, we need logistics because we need uh, someone to go into the office, someone to um, get more potatoes, someone to get more paper. OK, we need all of this. So in the end, uh, we have a lot of technology in action. We have a guillotine, we have scissors, we have copywriting. Everyone should be involved in this part of writing something. Uh, we have the actual writing, stamps, uh, peeling potatoes. Yeah, that, that's a, a task as well. Someone has to peel the potatoes. Uh, please don't use plastic glitter, okay? It's bad for the oceans. So in the end, we have something like this. We have paper manufacturing, decorating and personalization, and shipping. These are the three sections of our factory. And we have four teams. We have paper technology, we have design, we have quality and safety, and we have logistics. And for each of this, and you see the students are the same, okay, and a BMW will be a paper technolo technology master in paper manufacturing. And who um, will work on logistics for this particular paper manufacturing, because you do need to buy paper, you need to ship the paper to the to the design team, so they design the the exterior aspect of the paper, and of course, quality and safety has to be sure that the paper is folded correctly. For instance, uh, when decorating, uh, you need to ensure that paper is used correctly. You need to design the decoration. You need to. Uh, personalize that, that, that decoration in terms of, of paper. You need to be sure that the, the quality of the decoration is constant along all our, our... So you get the idea. You get a lot of ideas on, on how to implement the, the, the factory. Um, so this is the main issue. I try to, 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 to get you some example of a, a clear, simple factory that you can implement with kids. Of course, if it gets very, very technical, it gets uh, even uh, tougher to, to, to implement. And in, in, in it gets, uh, there's a little bit of hours of discussion who do, will do what. But the placement of the students in the correct team and in the correct group is paramount for the success. Okay, so I hope this was um, clear, Eddie. So let me just pass on one last slide with my contacts. OK, these, uh, because uh, I'm, I'm still open to questions if anyone ever asked some, some question. Uh, this, these are my contacts. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, please do use LinkedIn. Please do send me a mail. Please do come to Portugal and, and, and visit my school. Just don't do it all at the same time. And uh, last request for me, not, not, not for Eddie, because Eddie has been great in this session. OK, tip away just for me if you want, if you if you please do an evaluation and give me your feedback. And uh, of course, I'm a teacher. I need to know the feedback of who is listening to me. So thank you all very much for coming. And Eddie, I think for now, unless you have any additional question. Thank you very much, George. Uh, no, indeed, I think we're we're coming to a close tonight, so uh, we won't be taking any more questions, but I am I can already imagine uh, the mass producing of greeting cards uh, that is that is just happening in the, in the <laughs> brain of all the people who have attended and it's a great way of engaging students of all ages uh, with with the factory processes and and how to really problem solve and and yeah. use their use their own initiative to find solutions to to at the end of the day very simple uh, problems so that's that's great thank you very much for this very very interesting presentation uh, everyone please do take the time to um, feed fill the feedback form um, because it's going to be very very useful for George um, yeah. 
before wrapping up, uh, I'd like to remind also everyone to sign the signatures list if you haven't done so already, because uh, if you want to receive a certificate, you will need to fill in that form. And I know it wasn't open before, but uh, if you did try earlier and didn't work, please do so now. It does work. Um, thank you everyone for attending this evening uh, web this evening's webinar. It's been a real privilege for us uh, to be a part of it and to accompany you in this journey. And thank you again to George for his presentation and to Microsoft uh, for all the great solutions they offer and for being a part of the STEM Alliance. I'll also take this uh, second to remind everyone that we've got a final webinar for the STEM Careers Days next week uh, with Scientix. The webinar is called Hands-On Experiments from shared experiences. It's happening on Wednesday the 15th at five o'clock uh, CET and Michael Gregory, who's a Scientix ambassador, will be sharing some experiments live. So it's going to be a very, uh, very fun and very engaging uh, webinar once again. Thank you so very much everyone for attending this evening's webinar. Uh, we've been real happy to have you and we really hope to see you again in the future. In case we don't see you between now and then, uh, happy season's greetings and happy holidays to everyone. And uh, we very much look forward to seeing you at our next event. Have a great evening.